Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Kushroots Co. Today, we're going to discuss the most powerful kingdom, the Kingdom of Kush. The ancient Egyptians builds one of the greatest empires in history, and despite facing many difficulties, managed to maintain their sovereignty over almost the entire Nile River Valley. But Africa has always been a gigantic continent inhabited by many different peoples. Some when it's a conquered the fertile lands of Egypt. Kingdoms and tribes with origins in Libya, Syria, and Turkey were constantly fighting against Egypt. But there were a people whose tenacity and courage frightened even the powerful Egyptians. The Nubians were an African people who lived in the new BIA region, in today's Sudan. The Nubian people have been living in that region for a long time. By 3100 BCE, there will be Nubian villages along the River Nile. During much of their history, the Nubians did not develop any writing. Much of what we know about them is in the records left by the Egyptians. The new bow was a region rich in gold veins, semi-precious stones, ebony, wood, incense, and ivory. This wide range of resources encouraged the Egyptians to invade that region in search of extremely useful raw materials. The Nubians resisted the Egyptian invasions as much as possible, but they were militarily inferior and were progressively pushed south. Due to the various periods of instability in Egypt, the Nubians were able to organize more effective defenses during periods of peace. Nubians and Egyptians traded and shared different forms of knowledge. During the reign of Pharaoh Topmost, the first the Nubians were part of the Egyptian empire, but that dominion quickly collapsed and the Nubian has established a unified kingdom, with Napata as its capital. The Nubians thus founded the kingdom of Kush, which would become a respected African power. The term Kush, a kingdom comes with the Egyptians, who called the Nubian Kush, the founder of this new kingdom was a tribal leader named Olara, who became king of all the new VNs with the Kushite kingdom, established the next step what to ensure is defense and economy for this Alawa successors, reigns successfully strengthening the kingdom and expanding their domains. The coastal elites began to trade with Egypt through the Nile. They also established contact with the Arab kingdoms such as Nava, Taya, and Sheba. The riches of the Kush sites were extremely popular. Their leaders, priests, and even farm animals like horses were always embellished with pieces of gold and rubies. Over time and due to the periods of instability in Egypt, the Kushites started to conquer Egyptian cities, including the city of Thebes. At the height of their power under the command of King Pia, Egypt was fully conquered by the Kush Heights. King Pia declared himself the champion at the command of the god Amon. He joined his army ward for over a year against several Egyptians defeating everyone in his path. The phase of the Kushite and Egyptian history took place during the Third Intermediate Period of Ancient Egypt, which began around the year 1070 BCE. It is a period also historically known as the Nubian Dynasty. The coexistence between Egyptians and Nubians originated marriages between the nobility of the two kingdoms. Both cultures influence each other in religious and social matters. After consolidating the dominion in Egypt, King Pyy returned to the city on the Pata capital of the Kushite kingdom, leaving his brother and successor to rule Egypt and its cities. Egypt remained under Kushite rule until 656 BC, and only weakened due to the Assyrian invasions, which conquered almost all over Egypt, causing turbulent pharaoh's lands. The Assyrians were fearsome warriors much superior militarily. They already use iron weapons and armor. Besides siege weapons and a well-trained cavalry, the Kushite rulers had to retreat to the Pata. Sometime later, they founded the city, and Mayroy further south, Moroi became the new capital of the Kushite kingdom. The Kushite rulers adopted the Egyptian custom of erecting pyramids being buried in those built in the city. During this period, the Crusades began to develop the writing, the Maradex script, the Greek historian Diodorus Siculus, claimed that the Kushite kings reigned until they received an order from the priests of the Golden Temple. When this happened, they committed suicide and passed the power to the next sovereign. This strange custom lasted until the reign of the leader Ergamimes, different from most of his compatriots. He was an educated man, having studied with Greek teachers and learned philosophy when Ergomenes was ordered to commit suicide. He was furious. He sent his soldiers to the temple to kill the priests, put an end to this custom. 
Women also had important roles in crochet society. Having an active voice in everyday matters for several times cushy queen's reign without the interference of male companions. There are even reports because she's a woman who fought in battles and commanded troops. The king's mother was given the title of Candace, which means queen mother. She was the king and queen's advisor. On some occasions, she participated in political negotiations and can even take full command. One of these powerful women and perhaps the bravest of her people was Amani Chiquetto, who reigned in Kush when Rome had already conquered Egypt. After the defeat of Mark Antony and Cleopatra, Rome demanded that the kingdom of Kush pay tribute to the Republic Imanishi Keto did not accept this demand and considered it an offense declaring war against Rome. Her soldiers advanced to pillage Egyptian cities under Roman rule, and 24 BCE, the Kushites sacked the cities of Aswan Philae and Elephantine. They returned to Kush with prisoners, valuable objects, and Roman statues. Even the head of the statue of the Roman Emperor Augustus was taken by a Manisha Keto in a gesture of contempt against the enemy. Upon learning this, Augustus sent Roman General Petronius and his soldiers to punish the Kush sides. There are a few details about the battle, but Petronius may have said that the Kushite had more than 30,000 warriors and were fighting with frightening fury. Amani Chiquetto was described as a corpulent and rough woman. She led her troops and became blind in one eye and being wounded by a Roman. After more than three years of fighting, the Romans finally proposed a peace agreement. In the year 20 BC, Romans and Kushites signed a peace treaty. The Roman emperor recognized the kingdom of Kush as an independent power without being obliged to pay taxes to Rome. The kingdom of Kush lasted until at 350, but due to a lack of resources and trade, the kingdom was very weakened and dispersed. The once rich and proud Kush kingdom ended up dominated by the Oxfam Empire, which expanded its borders from the region of Ethiopia. The Kush Heights were an incredible people with brave warriors, skilled craftsmen, and wise merchants. Their history shows us the strength and perseverance of the African people capable of repelling even the powerful Roman Empire. Now, if you found this video insightful, don't forget to hit the like button and share your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to Kush Roots Co. for more updates. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.